Hi, and welcome to Am I Taking the Right Vitamins? It's a webinar we put together to inform you on which vitamins you should take and the best supplements to ensure optimal health. I'm Brooke Beasley, and your host today, Dr. Stephen Hotze, founder and CEO of Hotze Health and Wellness Center, Physician's Preference, and Hotze Pharmacy. Welcome. Thanks so much, Brooke. Thanks yeah. for being here. You're the true expert, Dr. Hotze, and if anybody is going to hear, if anybody knows anything about vitamins and supplements, it would be you. You've been doing, um, doing natural approaches to health and encouraging people to take vitamins and supplements for I want to say 25 years. I mean, it's That's been right. a, it's been a it's while. Been exactly right. Well, what prompted you to get interested in uh, vitamins and supplements? Well, I think you'll find this a very interesting story. In 1988, my father came to my office on the north side of Houston complaining of chest pain. Mm -hmm. And as I listened to his description, it appeared to me that it was probably cardiac or heart in origin. I said, Dad, I think what we're going to need to do is take you over to the hospital uh, to see a cardiologist friend of mine. Let's have you evaluated. Knowing that when he had chest pain at his age, he was 72 at the time, that he would be hospitalized overnight, at least to be monitored. Well, he was hospitalized and the cardiologist performed a heart catheterization on him mm -hmm. and indeed he had some blockage in his arteries. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, his chest pain went away, he hadn't had a heart attack and he was released from the hospital. About a month later, chest pain returned again. This time when he went back to the hospital, they did coronary um, catheterization of his uh, coronary arteries and of course he had a large blockage of the heart mm. and they had decided they were going to perform what is called an angioplasty where they stick a the catheter in at the end of the catheter a balloon comes out and it and it dilates up and it's supposed to mash the uh, blockage against the walls to open up the artery well unfortunately when this happened and I was there watching it uh, from outside the room looking through the window following the cardiac monitor I saw there was a terrible change in the electrocardiogram which I knew mm. meant that there was not a good sign. Bad thing had happened. Right. Well, what had happened is when they did angioplasty in his left anterior descending artery, which goes over the left ventricle, which is the main pump to the heart, they tore it wide open. So I got on the phone immediately and called uh, my good friend who was there and back up, Dr. Robert Feldman, who's a cardiovascular surgeon, and said, Bob, get over here. They just tore open Dad's arteries and he's in need of emergency surgery. And they did emergency surgery. He survived it, thank God, but it damaged the heart severely. Two weeks later, after he was out of the hospital, Dad called me over and said, son, I want to talk to you. Come over. And, you know, I felt bad about what had happened. I was the one that had recommended this doctor, and he'd had this right. disaster. And he said, I don't know what I was thinking. Letting them do that to me. I'm an engineer. My dad was a very successful entrepreneur. He had a large manufacturing business he had developed with, uh, that now has over 375 on staff or employees. Wow. And he was, he was very successful. I mean, he was an engineer. He said, this violates every engineering principle I've ever learned. Mm. He said, it's like the pipelines that we work in, and we're in the all gas pipeline industry. Our company, our family business is Compressor Engineering Corporation, so we deal with oil and gas pipelines and, and engines that develop compression to drive natural gas from the field to the cities. Right. And he said, it's like a pipe. When you have a crack in it, you put pressure on it, it's going to blow. He yeah. said, that artery was calcified. You can't stretch a calcified artery. I don't know what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Of course it's going to rupture. Right. He said, read this. And he gave me a um, newsletter from Dr. Julian Whitaker. And Dr. Whitaker is a health and wellness physician in Newport Beach, Florida. I'm sorry, Newport Beach, California. And he is an outstanding. This is the first time I'd ever heard of him in 1998. He's since become a very close friend and ally in natural approaches to health. And he's visited our center here and I've visited his center. But Dr. Whitaker talked about um, what to do if you've had a heart attack. And in his article, he's, he, he's so he wrote out what the published literature had said, mm -hmm. and it said this, if you have a heart attack and you have angioplasty, your mortality rate or your chance of dying in the first year is 15%. Wow. If you have cardiovascular surgery, bypass surgery, your chance of dying in the first year is 5%, so it's better than angioplasty. But if you don't do anything but lose weight, exercise, change your diet, and take vitamins and minerals and nutrients and any appropriate medication to keep blood pressure or something down, your chance of dying is 1%. And he said, don't let the doctors invade your body. And wow. Dad said, what do you think about this? I said, well, Dad, I wish we'd have tried this. I didn't know about that. He mm -hmm. said, well, this doctor in here says, I need to take vitamins. What do I need to take? 
I just looked at him like the deer in headlights and said, Dad, I'm a doctor. What do I know about oh. doctors? <laughs> Sad Which is a terrible that. commentary yeah. about the training of physicians in the United States and pretty much across the world, mm -hmm. that they are not trained in nutritional, uh, any nutritional factors or vitamins, minerals, and nutrients or, or proper, uh, proper eating. Uh, it's all, tr basically, it's, it, they're trained to give drugs or right. do surgery. It's a disease model. Find the problem, the solution is a drug or a surgery. Right. It's ma it's ma yeah. And so rather than, so I knew nothing about vitamins and he said, son, would you find out? Now, I'm the oldest of eight, seven boys, and I love my dad. And I said, uh, Dad, I will. I'll find out. And I did. So I went from not knowing anything about vitamins to owning now a vitamin business, which has been in business since 1993, Physician's Preference, that has over 150 different products and serves uh, tens of thousands of clients across the United States. Right. You know, and it's amazing because most people, when they think of a vitamin nutrition expert, they don't think of a, of a physician. Well, most Based on what you most just... physicians will not recommend vitamins. But I've read studies where a large proportion of physicians, I don't know if it's a majority, take vitamins and minerals, but wow. they don't they don't tell their patients about it. Right. You know and why? Maybe they take it, but they don't know about it. They take it but, because but, someone else told them to take it. Yeah. But they, yeah. it's interesting. They'll take it, but you know what? Uh, the medical profession's very cliquish, and if somebody can, uh, and is very dogmatic, and if you get off the path and you start recommending something that's considered natural and not pharmaceutical, they raise the eyebrows at you. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you're prescribing vitamins? Hmm. Well, right. in, in, in somewhere in the neighborhood of half the doctors take some form of vitamins. Wow. But they don't know much about them, and most doctors, right. when you ask about vitamins, they, they don't shrug know. their shoulders. Or if you're taking them, fine. I don't know if they do any good or not, but you know, it's not going to hurt you. Right. Right. Well, um, I know that I want a better explanation or maybe even a, a definition of what a vitamin is. Uh, I don't know that a lot of people really understand what a vitamin is. That's a good question. And simply, vitamins are organic substances that are produced by plants. Hmm. Uh, we're talking about B complex, vitamin C. Vitamin D, although, is made by sunlight right. and converts cholesterol in our body. Uh, to vitamin D, vitamin E, of course, and the minerals all come from plants. Now, we can get them from eating meats as well because animals eat plants like cows. They mm -hmm. eat plants, and so they take vitamins and minerals in. We don't produce our own vitamins and minerals, so they're essential for life, and they're components to enzymatic reactions that occur within our cells that enable our cells to be able to produce and use energy right. and for us to be able to grow and to have vitality. So vitamins are essential for all the chemical reactions, the enzymatic reactions that occur within our cells. Mm. Now, you have to get vitamins somewhere since you can't make them. That's okay? right. So they've got to come from either food products or you take supplements. Really, there's, there are six key nutrients. When you think of nutrients, there are six key nutrients that we need to live. We need carbohydrates, we need proteins, uh -huh. we need fats, we need vitamins, we need minerals, we need water. Those six things, if any of those are missing, you're not, you, if any of those are missing, you're not gonna be able to live. You've got to have all, you can't live without water, you can't live without carbohydrates, because that's how you have sugar. You have to have proteins to have amino acids to build your, your muscle right. mass, your right. cardiovascular function. You gotta have proper fats in your body, because every cell is lined with, with uh, with essential fatty acids. Uh -huh. You gotta have vitamins, because they, vitamins and minerals, which help uh, the enzyme or the components to the enzymatic reactions that allows our cells to produce and use energy. You gotta have water. You do. 